All right, guys, we are now 7-1 and one in our last eight board member tier package bets on BrockPage.com. $1,000 bettors are up over $5,300 during that span alone. And if you want to access today's board member tier package bet, the link for that play is in the description section below. Now, before we go ahead and move on, just want to take a quick time out and welcome you to the video. My name is Brock Page, and I do sports fix for free right here on YouTube. I also sell my personal bets on BrockPage.com. And uh, if you want to see my current sports betting record, you can do that for free right now by going to the home page. We currently have over 885 members who are signed up and active on that website right now. And I have packages on that site starting at just $1.99. Now, if you want to know what the difference is between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my webpage, well, what I do here on YouTube is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side, and total. And what I do on BrockPage.com is I actually share with you which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally. And with that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into some Major League Baseball content here. We're going to go ahead and start off with the Brewers taking on the Pirates and that's going to be a 6.35 Eastern start time on Tuesday, April 26, 2022. Now, Milwaukee's minus $1.80 with the total at 7. Brandon Woodruff for Milwaukee. Mitch Keller for Pittsburgh. And despite a, a bit of a rough start here for Keller, he's certainly done a nice job striking batters out. The righty's got 15 strikeouts and just 13 innings of work. Now, this Pittsburgh pitching staff's also done a real nice job of keeping runners off the base paths at PNC Park this year. These guys actually find themselves in the top 10 in the majors and fewest runs allowed per game at home. Now, they're taking on a Milwaukee squad on the other side of things who's actually done a terrible job getting runners on base on the road. Now, as a matter of fact, the Brewers currently find themselves in the bottom five in the bigs in road hits per game. Now, starting pitcher Brandon Woodruff, he also comes into this uh, contest here today with uh, six walked batters already, and he also has an ERA of 430. Now, when it comes to the total on this one, seven out of Milwaukee's last nine away games fell under the posted number. They're also 76% to the under for the entire season. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh's 11-5 to the under for the whole year themselves. I'm going to lean toward Pittsburgh plus one and a half and the under seven runs. <clears throat> Next ball game I have for you. It is going to be Mariners taking on the Rays, 640 Eastern start time. Both teams are minus a buck ten with the total at seven. Logan Gilbert for Seattle, Matt Whistler for Tampa Bay. And even though Whistler's had a pretty good start to the season, this Rays pitching staff does tend to give up the majority of their runs at the drop. And as a matter of fact, Tampa Bay's in the bottom five in the league and runs allowed per contest at home. And they're also amongst the worst in the American League in home walks allowed per game. Now they're taking on a Seattle lineup on the other side of things who's, uh, you know, really gotten after it this year doing a really good job offensively. Uh, these guys are in the top 10 in home runs, top five in OPS at the plate. Now, Ty France has five home runs and 19 RBI. He's uh, actually second in the bigs right now in that RBI category. Meanwhile, J.P. Crawford's hit a couple of homers and also has an OPS of 1.045. Now, when it comes to the pitching in this one, Logan Gilbert's a solid 2-0 in the year with a .54 ERA and a .84 whip. When it comes to the total on this one, three out of Seattle's last four ball games did get over the total of seven runs. They're also 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Tampa Bay. I'm going to go ahead and lean towards Seattle, minus a buck 10, and the over seven runs. Next ball game, it is going to be Padres taking on the Reds, 6.40 p.m. East. Uh, San Diego's minus $1.80, totals eight runs. Joe Musgrove for the pods. Raver San Martin for Cincinnati. 
Now, uh, Sam Martin's 0-2 on the season with a 7-11 ERA and a 1.58 whip. Meanwhile, offensively, this may be the worst lineup in baseball. These guys are scoring only 2.8 runs a game right now, and they're actually dead last in the bigs in OPS. <clears throat> they're taking on a San Diego pitching staff who's actually in the top three in opponents' batting average themselves, and they've got Joe Musgrove on the mound for him here today. Now, Joe's 2-0 with 21 strikeouts and just 19 innings of work. Uh, the righty's also got himself a 189 ERA and a .74 whip. Now, total-wise, five out of the pod's last seven road games fell under the posted number. They've also held Cincinnati to just three runs a game in their last 10 head-to-head -head meetings. So if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. I'm going to go ahead and lean towards San Diego, minus $1.80 in the under eight runs. <clears throat> Next ball game, it is going to be Rockies taking on the Phillies, 645 Eastern start time. Philadelphia is minus $1.60, totals eight runs. Zach Eflin for the Fightins, Herman Marquez for Colorado. And despite a bit of a rocky start, pun intended, Marquez has struck out 13 batters in just over 17 innings. Now, the Rockies have also won four out of their last six road games, and they have one of the strongest lineups in the NL West. C.J. Crones hit six home runs along with 17 RBI. Meanwhile, Connor Joe's got four homers on the year, along with an OPS of 1.039. Now, they're taking on a Phillies team who gives up uh, just too many runs at Citizens Bank Park. They're actually in the bottom 10 in the league and runs allowed per game at home. And, of course, starting pitcher Zach Eflin, he comes into today's start with no wins on the year yet, and a 1.39 whip. Now, total wise, six out of these teams' last 10 meetings did get over the line. So once again, if you're into historical trends, plenty of overs to go around. As a matter of fact, the Phillies are allowing nearly six runs a game to the Rockies in those very meetings I just mentioned. I'm going to lean toward Colorado, plus one and a half, in the over eight runs. The next ball game, it is going to be Orioles taking on the Yankees, 705 Eastern first pitch. The uh, New York Yankees are minus 270, total seven and a half runs. Luis Severino for New York, Jordan Lyles for Baltimore. And even though Lyles is off to a decent start, the O's are winning only 30% of their road games. And they currently lead the majors in strikeouts at the plate. As a matter of fact, this O's lineup is currently dead last in the majors in scoring and home runs. They're taking on a very good New York pitching staff who allows only 2.7 runs a game themselves. Now, Luis Severino, he's also 1-0 on the year with a 208 ERA and 14 punchouts. Now, when it comes to the number in this one, three out of New York's last five outings did get over the total of seven and a half runs. Uh, meanwhile, Baltimore saw their last four straight all get over that seven and a half number themselves. I'm going to lean toward the New York Yankees minus one and a half in the under seven and a half runs. Next contest, it is going to be Marlins taking on the Nationals, 705 Eastern first pitch. Miami's minus a buck 20, total seven and a half. Sandy Alcantara for the fish, Josiah Gray for Washington. Now, Gray's walked seven batters already and has a 1.33 whip. Uh, this Washington pitching staff's also dead last in the majors and walks allowed at home. And they're giving up more runs per contest on their home field than any other team in the majors right now. They're taking on a Marlins team who actually does a real nice job getting runners on base on the road. They actually find themselves in the top 10 in the bigs in road walks per contest. Meanwhile, pitching-wise, Sandy Alcantara is off to a real nice start this year. 186 ERA and a 1.09 whip. Now, uh, Sandy's also struck out 15 batters in just over 19 innings of work. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, the Marlins' last two straight got over the total of 7.5 runs. They were also 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Washington. Meanwhile, the Nats on the other side of things, they saw three out of their last five get over the total of seven and a half runs themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Miami, minus about 20, in the over seven and a half. 
Next ball game I have for you, it is going to be Red Sox taking on the Blue Jays. And that's going to be a 7.07 Eastern first pitch. Toronto's minus 195, totals eight runs. Kevin Gosman for Toronto. Nick Pavetta for Boston. Now, Pavetta's off to a dreadful season thus far. He's got himself an 0-3 record and a 10.03 ERA. Now, uh, Nick's also walked nine batters in just over 11 innings of work. And he also has a 214 whip. Now, he's taking on a tough Blue Jays lineup, who's actually in the top three in the majors and home hits per game themselves. Vlad Guerrero's hitting 344 with five home runs and a 1.023 OPS. Meanwhile, Lordy Guriel, he's batting 297 with a couple of homers and double-digit RBI himself. When it comes to the pitching in this one, Kevin Gaussman's uh, pretty much come out of the gate swinging. He's having a great start to the year. He's got 22 strikeouts, zero walks, and a 289 ERA. Now, total-wise, Toronto's gone 4-3 and three to the over in their last seven at Rogers Center. They're also averaging nearly 5.5 runs a game in their last 10 meetings with the Bow Sox. I'm going to lean toward Toronto, minus 1.5 in the over eight runs. Next ball game, it is going to be Royals taking on the White Sox, 7-10 p.m. East. Chicago's minus 150, totals nine runs. Dallas Keuchel for the White Sox, Daniel Lynch for Kansas City. Despite a few bad innings, Lynch does have a win on the season. He's also struck out nine batters in 10 innings of work. Now, pitching-wise, the Royals haven't, give up a, they haven't given up a whole lot of runs on the road this year. They're actually in the top 10 and fewest road runs allowed. And they've also accumulated a bunch of strikeouts away from home as well. Now, they're taking on a Chicago lineup on the other side of things who struggled at the plate this year themselves. These guys are actually in the bottom five in home hits, and they're amongst the worst in the majors in home scoring as well. Now, when it comes to the pitching in this one, Dallas Keuchel, he's kind of been a shell of himself. He's officially got an ERA of 15 flat right now, along with a whip of 283. And when it comes to the number, four out of Chicago's last six at guaranteed rate field did fall under the line. Meanwhile, Kansas City is currently 64% to the under for the whole year themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Kansas City plus one and a half and the under nine runs. Next ball game I have for you, it is going to be Cubs taking on the Braves. This hat is crooked. Looking at it in the screen. Weird. Anyway, uh, next matchup, it is going to be Cubs taking on the Braves. 720 Eastern first pitch. Atlanta's minus 165, totals eight runs. Max Fried for the Braves, Marcus Stroman for Chicago. And uh, even though Stroh's had a couple of rough outings, he still fanned 14 batters in just over 13 innings of work. And uh, even if he does have a rough go of things, the Chicago lineup's been very dangerous. They're leading the league in runs and hits. Of course, outfielder Seiya Suzuki, he's actually hit four home runs and has an OPS of 1.180. Meanwhile, Ian Happ's batting 333 with 16 total hits. They're taking on a Braves team who allows an awful lot of runs themselves. As a matter of fact, this Braves pitching staff's in the bottom three in the majors, and runs allowed per contest at home. Max Fried's also off to a 1-2 and two start thus far in the year. And when it comes to the scoring in this one, Atlanta's gone 70% to the over at Truist Park. They're also 6-4 and four to the over in their last 10 meetings with Chicago. I'm going to lean toward the Cubs uh, plus 1.5 and, and the over 8.5 runs. Next ball game, it is going to be Tigers taking on the Twins, 7.40 p.m. East. Minnesota's minus 130, total seven runs. Chris Paddock for Minnesota, Eduardo Rodriguez for Detroit. Now, Ed Rod's got a dozen strikeouts and just over 13 innings pitched. And speaking of the pitching in this one, Detroit's currently allowing fewer runs per contest on the road than any other team in baseball. 
They're taking on a Minnesota team who's actually struggled hitting the baseball at target field. These guys are in the bottom three in home strikeouts, bottom 10 in home hits per game. Now, pitching-wise, Chris Paddock's off to a rough start thus far. He's got an 0-2 record with a 5 ERA. And when it comes to the scoring, Minnesota's 6-3 and to the under in front of their home fans. They're also 11-5 to the under in all of their games at any location. Meanwhile, Detroit's gone 67% to the under for the entire season themselves. I'm going to lean toward Detroit, plus one and a half, and the under seven runs. Next ball game, it is going to be Mets taking on the cards, 745 East. The New York Mets are minus a buck 20, total six and a half. Chris Bassett for New York, Jordan Hicks for St. Louis. And even though Hicks is off to a pretty nice start, the cards have lost three out of their last five. And they scored only three total runs in those losses. As a matter of fact, when this Cardinals lineup is at Bush Stadium, they're actually in the bottom 10 in the league in home scoring. They're taking on a New York team who's won seven out of their last nine themselves. And they have one of the stronger pitching staffs in the National League. And as a matter of fact, the Mets are striking out nearly 11 batters a game. And they're limiting their competition to a batting average of just 194. Chris Bassett's also 2-1 on the year with 20 strikeouts and a .94 whip. When it comes to the total in this one, New York saw seven out of their last eight ball games get over the total of six and a half runs. They've also gone 60% to the over in their last 10 meetings with St. Louis. Meanwhile, the cards are officially 5-0 uh, to the over at Bush Stadium this season. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the New York Mets minus 120 in the over six and a half. <clears throat> Next ball game, it is going to be Astros taking on the Rangers. 8.05 Eastern start time. Houston's minus a buck 20, totals nine and a half. Jake Odorizzi for Houston, Taylor Hearn for Texas. Now Hearn's off to a pretty bad start this year. 7.59 ERA, 2.34 whip. This Texas pitching staff also allows more hits at home than any other team in baseball. They're taking on a Houston lineup who does a, a pretty nice job getting on base on the road. The Strohs are also amongst the best home run titty. Uh, home run titty. Wow, the home run titties. The Strohs are also amongst the best home run hitting teams in the American League right now. Jordan Alvarez has four home runs along with 20 total bases. Meanwhile, Alex Bregman and Jeremy Pena, they have three home runs apiece as well. Now, total-wise, Houston's averaged nearly six runs a game in their last 10 meetings with the Rangers. They also went 60% to the over in those very contests I just mentioned. Meanwhile, Texas on the other side, they are currently 10-6 and six to the over for the entire season themselves. I'm going to lean toward Houston, minus a buck 20 in the over, 9.5. Next ball game I have for you, it is going to be Guardians taking on the Angels, 938 Eastern first pitch. The LA Angels are minus 155, total 7.5. Patty Sandoval for Los Angeles, Tristan McKenzie for Cleveland. Now McKenzie comes into today's ball game with some pretty good numbers. He struck out 11 batters in just over 11, um, 11 innings of work. He also has a 2.38 ERA. Now, the righty's also got himself a whip of 1.06. Meanwhile, offensively, the Guardians have done a real nice job hitting the baseball uh, despite their recent outings. Uh, Cleveland finds themselves right now in the top three in the majors in team batting average. And they're actually led by Owen Miller, who's batting 455 with an OPS of 1.361. Meanwhile, teammate Jose Ramirez, he's hit four home runs and leads the majors in RBI. They're taking on an Angels team who uh, allows just way too many home runs themselves. They can't keep the ball in the park. These guys actually rank amongst the worst in the American League and homers allowed per nine. Now, the Angels have uh, also just given up way too many runs in their own stadium. And when it comes to the total, eight out of L.A.'s last 10 outings got over the total of seven and a half runs. Meanwhile, Cleveland's gone 60% to the over in their road games this year themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Cleveland plus one and a half 
in the over, seven and a hook. Next contest, it is going to be Dodgers taking on the Diamondbacks, 9.40 p.m. East. L.A. is minus $2, totals nine and a half. Tony Gonsolin for Los Angeles, Zach Davies for Arizona. Now, uh, Davies hasn't been great this year. He's got a 5.02 ERA and a 1.33 whip. Uh, the D-backs are winning only 30% of their home games, and their lineup's currently dead last in hits per game on their own field. They're taking on a Dodger team who's won six of nine while traveling, and they arguably have the best pitching staff in baseball right now. Now, aside from allowing only 2.4 runs per contest, the Dodgers pitchers are first in the league in OPS, and they're limiting their competition to a batting average of just 186. Tony Gonsolin also comes into today's ball game with a 1-0 record on the year and an ERA of just .69. Now, when it comes to the number, LA is 7-2 to the under in their road games. They're also 69% to the under for the entire season at any location. Meanwhile, the Diamondbacks have gone 80% to the under this year at Chase Field. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the LA Dodgers minus one and a half. And the under nine and a hook. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It is going to be Athletics taking on the Giants. 9.45 Eastern start time. San Francisco is minus 265, total six and a half. Carlos Radon for San Francisco. Dalton Jeffries for Oakland. And as good as Jeffries has been to start the year, uh, he just can't get the, the run support he needs. He actually comes into today's ball game with a one and two record despite some really good numbers. Now the A's have actually struggled getting runners on base as well. They're in the bottom five of the majors right now in team batting average. And they're also striking out nearly double-digit times a game at the plate. Now they're taking on a uh, San Francisco squad on the other side of things who's uh, actually got one of the better pitching staffs in the game right now. Uh, these guys currently find themselves allowing only 2.6 runs per contest. And they're also leading the majors in fewest home runs allowed per game. And much of those... Uh, statistics there are thanks to Carlos Radon. He struck out 29 batters already in just 17 innings of work. He also has a 2-0 record and a 1.06 ERA, uh, 0.82 whip as well. Now, total-wise, four out of San Fran's last six at Oracle Park fell under the posted number. There were also 11-6 the under for the entire season at any location. Meanwhile, the A's on the other side of things they saw six out of their last 10 contests with San Francisco fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Giants minus one and a half and the under six and a hook in the very tight window. And with that, guys, now it's time for our quick pick recap. Power to you by my website at brockpage.com. We are currently seven and one in our last eight board member tier package bets. I like the Pittsburgh Pirates plus one and a half under seven runs. Give me Seattle minus a buck ten over seven. I also like San Diego minus a dollar eighty under eight runs. Give me Colorado plus one and a half over eight. Give me the New York Yankees minus one and a half under seven and a hook. I also like Miami minus a buck twenty over seven and a half. Give me Toronto minus one and a half over eight runs. I like Kansas City plus one and a half under nine. I'm also leaning toward the Chicago Cubs, plus one and a half, over eight and a hook. Give me Detroit, plus one and a half, under seven. I'm also leaning toward the New York Mets, minus a dollar twenty, over six and a half. Give me Houston, minus a buck twenty, over nine and a half runs. I also like Cleveland, plus a buck and a half, uh, plus one and a half, uh, over seven and a hook. I also like the LA Angels, minus one and a half, under nine and a half runs. Give me the LA Dodgers, minus one and a half, under nine and a hook. And with my next and final free pick for the video, I'm going to lean towards San Francisco, minus one and a half, and the under six and a half runs in that tight window. With that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind, 
You're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on BrockPage.com, you're going to get access to that membership every single day all the way through the end of uh, April. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And guys, if you want to get access to every single bet that I give out on that website, you're going to want to sign up for my board member tier package. Not only the board members get access to the board member tier pick itself, you're actually going to get access to every single package that I offer on that website. Uh, it's an all-inclusive membership. Uh, but most of, Now, real quick, guys, you may be wondering what the difference is between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my website. Well, what I do here on YouTube is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side and total. And what I do on BrockPage.com is I actually share with you which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great uh, free information. And with that said, guys, happy Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockage.com.